Okay, so we've just finished um, attaching all the rear drivetrain stuff and suspension. Look at how that close that is to the to the body post. Um, yeah, so now we're going to be doing the front suspension. So we're going to set that aside. Um, so there's going to be some pieces that we're going to be cutting off. We've got obviously the shocks. I'm just cutting these like ahead of time, probably preempting things, but uh, it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Save a tiny bit of time in a few minutes. Um, we've got, let's see, part 18. No, part eight and part three. Is this C? This is, yeah, this is C, part 18. Is it 18? Oh yeah, this tiny piece. No, eight and three. Here's eight. And there's three. Ah, oh, I see, okay. Three and four are uh, right next to each other. And we trim these little pieces off. And this piece off of this sprue. Okay, we've got that one there, and that one there. <laughs> it's funny how these go together and just two pieces go together and suddenly it looks like a suspension arm. Uh, so some three by tens. Do not over tighten because this is the softest plastic uh, that comes in the kit, other than tires. So you don't want these uh, to be to strip out. Another reason is because you only get these two pieces. No, there are you have two. You do have two spares of these. Okay, that's fine. Ignore that. Okay, so those are front arms made, and now we're opening bag D. Okay, so here's more of those springs that are going to go right there. Alright, so lots and lots of metal parts. This is, these are the ones that we're interested in right now. We've got these two and the out drives. The diff out drives, which are there. Okay, so pick up the chassis again. Okay. There's no metal brace that goes across there, so it's interesting. So this just pushes into place. Now you can use three mil um, stainless steel hinge pins, for example. Uh, I don't know the lengths. All you have to do is measure the distance from the outer edges of these arms, and you can get uh, you can get hinge pins from various sources. Whether there are spare parts for another car, or option part set for from Tamiya for this car. I don't think Tamiya make one, but someone will for sure. Uh, I've got these O-rings, yes, we'll go in there. And we're just pushing these back into, into place, just like on the rear. There we 
we are. And we're just pushing these into the, just make sure we get a good amount of grease on these. It's maybe a little bit too much, but I'll spread it onto the other one. Same sort of thing I do with uh, with screws when I do thread locking compound. There we are. There we are. Okay. So there we are. We've got our out drives in place. Um, upper arm C18. Those are the upper arms. Those will be the step screws once again. And these are just short, straight pieces just gets bolted straight into the bulkhead here. So just make sure that those are not too tight. They have free movement because that is your suspension. You want to make sure that uh, that can move up and down freely. Okay, so there's our upper arms, and there's our lower arms. Front axles, okay, so this is another slightly involved step. So we've got all of these pieces here, and a little bit more there. Two more bearings. And these pieces are these. I'm going to go ahead and just oops, just get the uh, the grease on these these bearings. I think they're going to need. They're not going to need. No, they don't need O-rings on these axles. So I was going to do that at the same time, but don't need to. This is maybe a slightly cleaner way than the way I did the rear bearings. So I'll just set that there. Now again, if you missed this in my previous steps, um, the reason why I'm putting grease on the bearings is just in case I do go through water and whatnot, I don't have to worry about them immediately. I can just kind of not worry about it too much. Um, unless I go through like serious mud or anything like that. Okay, so. Let's get these weird screws. And by weird, I mean these. Those are those are some funky screws, aren't they? So we need four of those. And we've got the uprights. Are they labeled? I don't think so. I think they're identical. Part F1. Okay. 
Yeah. Where's my clippers? Yeah, they're both F1 in the instructions. Good, good. It's the other pieces that have their own labels. Okay, so I'm going. I, I like to lay these out the way they're presented in the in the manual. So F12. Because you see, these are not identical. They're mirror image pieces, so I need to make sure I don't get them mixed up. So the left is that side there. The right is this side there. So I can toss this bit of sprue away. And okay, so got this piece and that piece. Just get it the uh, screw started because you don't want these to be off center. This is your steering, so obviously steering needs to control where the car is pointing. So and you don't want it too tight, and it looks like the. The, uh, the step down piece, step down section of this weird screw is long enough to where even if you do slightly over tighten it, it's not going to bind the, uh, the, the pieces together. So I've tightened those about, you know, as tight as you kind of want to go. Um, of course, I probably should have put the axle in place first, but that's okay because there's enough space there and you can just kind of pull it to seat that bearing. And there we are. Okay, now while I've got this in my hands, I'm going to go ahead and put in the the uh, ball stud and that goes on the end here and again you see how it's just slightly crooked you want to make sure that uh, you don't do that so I'm just backing it out and starting over again with the threads there okay so there we go that's the right side done and now we're going to do the same thing on this side so we've got there there i'm going to put the axle in first just because it's a little bit easier to do that and we're just making sure that those are mirror images And just getting one side started and then doing the other side. So again, making sure that this is as straight as we can. go and there's very little wiggle or wobble which is all good and then doing the ball stud again in the end hole make sure it's as straight as possible And then when you're sure, just clamp it down a bit. There we go. So there we go. There's our front pieces. All right. Okay, so step 29 is attaching the front axles. 
putting all these bits in place. Okay, so we've got the pin screw, the screw pins. We'll do those first. So here's our rights, and we're doing... Now again, different instructions for the high and the low ground clearance one. So for the high, we're doing through the... We're going through the upper holes and mounting the arm into the upper hole as well. Okay. All right, and now before we do the upper arm, we need to get some grease on the dog bone. Again, not a gigantic amount, because this... I'm using the Cowarcy Utter Butter, which is a nice and sticky grease. Um, it shouldn't fling off uh, at high speeds. Uh, the important thing is that it uh, sticks to all the metal surfaces where I want it to stick. And then we're doing a the step screw. This funky thing here. And then we're attaching the step screw into the upper hole of that front arm. Obviously we can't do the, the upper arm until we have the dog bone in place. So there's a simple series of steps that you need to do. And then we're going to snap the steering arm right on. Okay, so there we go. Plenty of thing, of uh, movement there. So the, obviously the shock is going to attach on this upper hole here and onto the chassis there. But that's the next step. So we're not doing that just yet. Okay, so we're doing... This is, uh, ah, okay, so this is a little bit tight there, but I think that's because I over-tightened this screw, I think. You know how it says don't over-tighten? I think I over-tightened it. I don't think that's uh, too much of a biggie, though. So I'm just going to give it another half turn out. Oh, no, I think it's... This may just be one of those areas where uh, you just expect pieces to wear in, because it doesn't seem to be getting any better. I don't want to loosen things too much here. So a little bit of a tight fit there. It's weird. I think once the car is driven a bit, yeah, it will wear in as long as there's um, enough freedom of movement there, it'll be all right. Okay, so now the other dog bone. Sorry, I'm not uh, showing that properly. And again, we thread the needle with um, with the dog bone through the upright here, 
try not to get grease on all the plastic parts, but uh, it is a little bit unavoidable. And then just getting that in place there. Whew. just attaching the upper arm okay so that's a little bit tighter but like I said in time after a couple battery packs that will wear in so I'm not I'm not worried about that that one is obviously is a lot looser that one it is sticking a little bit but if I loosen that screw on the back very much I think ideally what I would do probably is actually get uh, this and just sand down the black plastic piece or the red plastic piece so that it is nice and smooth but I'm not overly worried about that one if our if this were a race car yeah I'd be uh, concerned but I'm not okay so now we've got the steering in place there we are okay Next step is building these spring dampers. So just like before, line up the hole with the slot and push this piece in and put the spring over there and get those so they're 90 degrees, push it in, not too far. And there we are. So, so that they're lined up like that. And there you go. There's your damper. <laughs> Building a shock was never so easy. And like I said before, uh, first thing I would do probably is change to uh, change to oil-filled shocks. Um, but it's not a hypercritical thing. Um, this is just meant to be just a car for fun and bashing about, uh, maybe even towing on, you know, uh, towing with my scale rig or something like that. And uh, just having a bit of fun with and not getting too crazy serious. Although, I mean, oil filled chocks, it's not, it's not, not that that's going crazy. But uh, hopefully you know what I mean. I don't want to spend a massive amount of time and money on something that's just going to be uh, just for fun. Now if you remember the when I attached the rear shocks <laughs> um, I did have a bit of trouble but uh, that one seems to be fine and there's hardly any movement with that uh, with that uh, that shock so it seems to be totally fine I didn't get anything backwards on this on this uh, end of the car not showing that uh, anything properly there but uh, just a weird sort of angle okay so there's our front end of the car and you can see even with that sticky bit on the suspension the once the shock is in place um, that is totally fine okay so there we are look at that looks like a Tamiya car isn't it <laughs> black and red and chrome pieces so uh, let's finish off step uh, 32 and get these front um, the front body uh, uh, body mounts on and the bumper okay looks like I can kind of clip off the rest of these pieces as just spares so 
probably wouldn't normally do this on uh, on the on camera, but you know, we're just handy to have these little spare bits around. You never know when you need stuff like that. So yeah, so now that whole part sprue can be uh, tossed away. I will need this body mount though. Now, if you remember, these are half of the front arms. That's this other bumper. I suppose maybe that gets added to the back. I don't know. I don't know. There's no holes for it. These are, I imagine, these are spares for other mini cars. Someone will tell me, I'm sure. And these are um, um, bumper pieces. Uh, and yeah so that's it i'll clip those off again uh later so i just realized what these pieces are though these are these go on the ends here to hold the battery in place Woo! -hoo. okay so anyway just happy about that that i figured something out uh, okay so we got two and then we need four more of these three by tens so i got these body mounts on first It's lots of give and spring in these body mounts with the way the uh, the pieces are designed as well as the actual um, material they're made of so some uh, pretty nice design work on these cars I mean you know I think um, some people can possibly kind of turn their noses up at Tamiya cars and yeah they are a lot of plastic and you know all these weird monocoque pieces but um you know they work don't they so you can't really poo poo them all that much and plus they get so many people into the hobby um with their kits and and things like that maybe not as much these days because of the uh cheap availability of uh, RTR kits but they certainly do have their fans okay so we're nearly done I think one of the last things I like to once I get to like you know, like the end of a page in a kit. I like to try and figure out what's next. What's the next step that we're going to be doing? I think it's going to be um, putting on the, the outside bearings uh, and the hex adapters. No, it's not. Completely wrong. It's uh, installing the motor. The, bearing, the outer bearings and the hex pieces are going to be one of the very last pieces we do before we install the battery. Ah, see, I was correct. Look at that. So just as a, as a note um, for uh, <laughs> the bearing set, the 54643 bearing set, which is what I've installed, um, is uh, it does involve uh, flipping around the pieces here uh, and actually that spacer is meant to be in there so I'll take that off and put that back on and then the aluminum damper set that's these oil filled dampers um, that's 5400 yep should have flipped to uh, in, into the back to look for that um, okay so Let's um, let's end this here because we've got uh, the motor to be installed. There's like a, a motor brace. That's interesting. There's a peephole. Doesn't tell you put any tape over that. I'm going to put clear tape over that because I don't like that uh, an open peephole involved uh, being right there. Um, we have a speed controller to use in the car. I uh, just need to find a handy uh, or available uh, receiver. Um, so yeah, that'll be the next step. And we'll get to that. Um, we'll get to that in the next video. Yeah. 
Okay, so I think that is going to be it for uh, this video. But there we are, look at that. We've got almost a complete car, almost. It's looking pretty good, I must say. It looks, it looks quite cool. Um, there's, there's a lot to it. There's a lot more to this car than, than the way I originally thought. I must say, I do quite like it. Um, just going to coil this up just to tidy that up a little bit. I think that's where the speed controller is meant to live. Receiver is meant to live there if it fits. Um, yeah. There we are. Quite liking that. I hope you are too. Um, and if you're liking the video and the video series so far, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the big red button there, nice and inviting. Um, we'd really appreciate it. And hit that uh, notification bell icon at the top left, top right of your screen to be told when you, uh, you know, there's new videos coming out. Um, that'd be very, very helpful. So, um, once again, PolePositionRC.com. You can visit the website. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. The tags there are, or the accounts there are Pole Position RC Gear. And um, yeah, so that's it. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks, you, thanks uh, very much for watching. Bye bye.